Hello everyone, and let me show you one more chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz. And as I mentioned before, the chess games of Steinitz is incredibly eye-opening, instructive, and aggressive. So in this chess game, Wilhelm Steinitz is playing with the black pieces and his opponent is at Pilhel. This game was played in Vienna in 1859, and at this time, Steinitz was in his early 20s. Ed Pilhel, who has the white pieces, starts the game with playing e4, e5 by Steinitz, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, Italian opening, bishop to c5, c3, knight to f6, d4, e takes on d4, e5, attacking the knight, counter-attacking the bishop, d5, bishop to b5, knight to e4, c takes on d4. Well, Steinitz retreats his bishop to b6, and Pilhel castled. So is Steinitz. Bishop takes on c6, b takes on c6, bishop to e3, bishop to g4, queen to c1, f5. Queen takes on c6. Steinitz is leaving his pawn. After queen takes on c6, we have bishop takes on f3, g takes on f3, attacking the knight. Well, Steinitz didn't move his knight to anywhere. He played f4, advancing the pawn, and also attacking the bishop, bishop to c1, and then knight to g5, attacking the pawn, defending with the king. But after defending, on f3, Steinitz captures on d4, going for the material equality, and also in this position, Steinitz has too many active pieces, and on the other hand, white has this knight and the bishop doing nothing, and also the rook on a1 is stuck. So again, Wilhelm Steinitz has the superb attacking position, rook to e1, Rook to f5 by Steinitz, e6, advancing the pawn. After e6, it's black to move, and Wilhelm Steinitz played a marvelous move, an incredible move. Well, he played knight to e4 by Steinitz, sacrificing the knight. And Pilhel happily captures the knight, f takes on e4, and also attacking the rook. But here comes queen to h4 by Steinitz, sacrificing everything, sacrificing the rook on f5, and also sacrificing the rook on a8. Wilhelm Steinitz is sacrificing everything, literally. So we have rook to f1, not capturing anything. Well, let me show you. One possible continuation, if queen takes on a8, then rook to f8, defending. And what now? If, let's say saving the queen, let's say if queen takes on d5, then we have queen takes on f2, and white is getting force checkmated. Of course, if king to h1, then queen to f3, this is checkmate. So after queen takes on f2, if king to h3, queen to f3, king to h4. And as you can see, white is getting force checkmated. After rook to f6, that's checkmate. So as you can see, Steinitz has all kinds of attacking, nasty attacking positions, nasty attacking possibilities. And in this position, this is why. At Pilhel, played a defensive move. Rook to f1, and should black defend the rook by going back? No. Steinitz likes to attack. He played f3, that's check, king to h1, and then bishop to e5 by Steinitz, the first official world chess champion. And after bishop to e5, Pilhel resigned. What a marvelous chess game by Steinitz. Literally sacrificed everything, but eventually crushed his opponent. An epic game by Steinitz. So let me show you the possible continuation. Well, you can't defend the checkmate threat. Queen takes on h2. You can't defend. There is no way. 
But for entertainment, let me show you the possible continuation. So queen takes on a8. Let's check. Blocking with the rook. Queen takes on a7. Queen takes on h2. Checkmate. So after rook to f8, if queen takes rook, king takes on f8. And white has these all kinds of meaningless moves for prolonging the game. e7, king takes on e7, e takes on d5, and then queen takes on h2, check, mate. There is no defense. Unbelievable. So this is why Stein is played f3, and then king to h1, and Stein is played bishop to e5, and the game ended here. Another eye-opening and a beautiful chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Take care.